I woke up today and I chose violence. I'm coming out here swinging today. So in today's video, we're going to talk about 13 interior design trends that are going to die in 2022. And of course, before we start the video, let me say this. If you like these design trends and you want to put your money into them, go ahead and do it. Your house should represent you, but I'm just going to give you, I'm going to give you the tea so that you can make a very educated decision so that you don't waste any money because that's, that's something we don't do here. So the first design trend that is not going to make it out of 2022, honestly, I don't know how it made it out of 2021. I don't know who decided that, but this design trend is the kitchen open shelving. Now I like it. I love the way it looks. I love a beautifully stacked bowl. You know, I, I can get down with a beautifully stacked bowl. I love the way that they look, but functionally it's a no for me. It's definitely a no for me though. So if you have a kitchen that only has open shelving, I want to know where your pots and pans are. Where are you putting them? I need to know. I need to know where they are. The fact of the matter is, is while it looks absolutely gorgeous, it's just not practical. It's not functional. And you end up actually overflowing your kitchen supplies to other parts of the home. And your, your crock pot should not be in your bedroom. Your crock pot should not be in your garage. Your crock pot should be in your kitchen. And when we have the open shelves, obviously we want to make them look good. We don't want to overload them with stuff, right? So it just ends up causing a disaster in terms of organization in the home. And so while it looks good, I don't think it's going to make it. I think that your kitchen can look good without having open shelving. Instead of going for the open shelving, which again, it does look beautiful, just start decorating your countertop. Get a fun countertop and maybe do a really fun backsplash so that you can style your countertop, right? The countertop, except for where you're cooking, it's not really used, right? Most of us have an island where we cook. So the countertop, you can add decor there. You can add your cookbooks and your vase and your this and your that, but don't use those shelves for that. You need to use your cabinetry and your cells for actual kitchen items. So it's not going to make it out of 2022. I don't think people can keep up with the dust like the stock of Swiffer, like maybe I should buy it. It's just, it's too laborious. It's not going to make it past 2022. Now I just talked about those open shelves and I'm going to sound like a freaking walking Swiffer ad because the next thing that's not going to make it out of 2022 is the pleated lampshade. Now I love a good pleated lampshade. I will search the interweb for a pleated lampshade. They look good. They add a little bit of texture. They're fun. They're as fun as a lampshade could be, but they are dusty as I don't know what, but they're so dusty. They get so much dust and your really nice ivory lampshade somehow becomes gray. And if gray is not in your color scheme, that's not something that we want to do. The texture just holds too much of that dust and dusting a lampshade is something that people don't tend to do. And I'm telling you, every time I go to the nail salon, I'm sitting there like, Ooh, what's the color? And I'm just looking right up at that lampshade with a film of dust. It's just not a good look. Plus it makes it hard to breathe. We don't want to do all of that. Let's just stick to, you know, some less dust heavy lampshades. So an empire shade, um, they have so many different types of fun shades. Maybe we'll just skip out on the pleated shade because while it looks good, it's just not easy to keep up with. So maybe just have one, but don't convert all of the lampshades in your house to that. I promise I promise you, I promise you, maybe you'll get a brand collaboration with Swiffer, but otherwise nothing good will come of it. Now, this is a trend that I don't even know if you know is a trend, but the next thing that is not going to make it out of 2022 is the low lumen light fixture. So if you don't know what lumen is, a lumen is like a measurement that lets you know how bright something is, right? And I'm not talking about Kelvin. I'm literally just talking about lumens and all these really, really cool lights. And I, I buy into this every single trend here. I I've done right. I've done. So we're, we're both being attacked here. All of our feelings are hurt here. When something has a low number of lumens, it means that it's not very bright. And of course, all different parts of your home need different levels of brightness. So that's fine. But people will get one light in their living room and they'll get this really nice, beautiful, intricate light, but it gives off like one lumen of light. What are you going to do? Um, yet you need a flashlight to maneuver your own home. That's ridiculous. Right? you got to get out your ring light to be able to see where your dining table is. It makes absolutely no sense. So if you're buying these intricate light fixtures. I, I, I don't care if you keep buying them, please keep buying them, but look at the lumens before you buy a light fixture because it's not really a light fixture if it doesn't give off any light, right? So we need to actually make sure it's not just sculptural. It actually has a purpose. And I've seen this a lot with this new modern organic trend, which I love looking at. It looks really great, but you cannot see. 
You cannot see when the sun goes down and we have electricity, so let's use it, right? And plus, those things, you still are paying the electricity bill and they're still, you know, using up a lot of energy, but I still cannot see. You can probably tell that this really personally offends me, but please stop doing this. This is a design trend. It's not gonna make it out of 2022. We're gonna actually have to get light fixtures that give off light. You don't have to give up the sculptural. You don't have to give up the cool. It just means you have to do a little bit more research. Read those specifications. Now, as I wrote this one down, I said to myself, I can already see the comments. I can already see the comments on this one because they're gonna be like, don't you do that? Don't you do that? I sure do. So the next design trend that's not gonna make it out of 2022 is the oversized tabletop greenery. Now, again, I'm not talking about your floor greenery. I'm not telling you to, you know, chop down your tree. I'm not telling you to do that. Okay, relax. But what I am saying that the oversized tabletop greenery, it's gotta go. And does it look good? Yes. Do I love it? Yes. I'm living for it. It's amazing. It is one of my favorite design trends to date. But my qualm with it is that when you're actually in the space, you can't can't see past it. You know, I'm sitting at my dining table. I'm trying to set the table. We're going to have a little bit of a dinner and I have this big pot on there with this overflowing greenery and I have to like, you know, backpack through the Amazon to be able to see my wife on the other side of the table. That's ridiculous, right? And I feel like so many of us have this on our dining tables, on our coffee tables, on our islands. They look great for those Instagram pictures. It looks great for styling when you're not actually using that area, but otherwise you can't see past anything. And again, I just went on a rant about being able to see in your home. You shouldn't have decorative accents that block your ability to see. Now, if you're putting this on a pedestal in a corner, please keep on keeping on. I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. But if that's not what you're doing, maybe we're going to have to move away from this. We're going to have to ameliorate our placement, or we're just going to have to get a little bit, you know, shorter greenery. It's sad. I'm sad. We're all sad, but it's not going to make it out of 2022 because the main design trend in 2022 that's going to make it to 2023 is the fact that people are opting for practical decor. People do not want a house that is impractical anymore. We're not doing the all white anymore. Anymore, I feel attacked. We're not doing the all black and white anymore. I feel attacked. We're not doing the modular furniture anymore. I am still being attacked. Um, we're not doing any of that. We're just living practically. And that means we can't do the oversized greenery. Now people are really hype about rugs right now. Like people are hype about rugs and I love it, right? I love that there are people now who are hype about the same things I'm hype about because you know, there's nothing like having dinner and being like, oh my God, are you so excited about this rug? And people are like, no, like I'm excited about like normal things. Things. But rugs are really in. People are hype about rugs and I'm here for it. But the rug that is really trendy right now is a very thick pile wool rug and we love it. We love the way that it looks. I love the way that it looks. Again, I love the way all of these design trends look, but it's not gonna make it past 2022 because it is too hard to clean. It's too hard to clean. You know, Roomba, I've got a qualm with you, Roomba. So I buy these thick pile rugs. My Roomba says, oh no. Not for me, I can't do it. It's literally trying to climb Everest to get onto the rug. It, it can't be done, right? So these rugs, while they look good, they're really difficult to clean. I can't send my robot to do it. Oh, that sounds, wow, 21st century, eh? I can't send my robot to do it. I have to go do it myself. And plus, it's like, honey, I shrunk the kids in there. There's so much debris stuck under there. You have to pretty much comb it. It's just an ordeal to kind of keep it clean. Of course, if you don't have kids, if you don't have pets, if you're a clean eater, if you don't eat in front of the TV, like good for you, but that's not like most people, right? So it's just kind of impractical. So I love the look, but in your living rooms, in your dining rooms, I don't think it's going to work past 2022. I think in your bedroom, it's still cool, but they also shed, right? So. I don't know about you, but my dog doesn't shed and I love him for that. And some people don't care about shedding, but a lot of people do care about shedding. So, you know, if you decided not to get a pet that sheds, maybe you don't want to get a rug that sheds because honestly, this is worse. This is worse and there are no benefits. There's no one to give you a kiss. There's no one to pay fetch with because it's just a rug. So I don't think these rugs are going to make it past 2022 in spaces people actually live in. Now in those designer spaces you see on Instagram and in those big magazines, of course, of course it's going to stay, but the people don't actually live there. So that's something we all always need to take into consideration when we're chatting about these design trends. Now, this is a trend I, I love it. I love it. Hand formed tile. So if you don't know what that means, it basically is a tile that isn't perfect, right? It's hand formed. So it has some imperfections in it. You see it a lot in the modern organic, the modern traditional, the wabi-sabi. I love the way that it looks. I love the look of hand formed tile. Now the problem with it is it doesn't look super clean, right? It looks very organic. It is, it is full of imperfections. And 
right now we're really seeing the beauty and the imperfections in design but i can't help but remember that traditional design contemporary design modern design all of those design styles that have been around for a long time that have been really really popping for a long time they don't have that right they don't have those elements. Everything is really crisp and clean and pristine. So for me, I'm kind of worried about the fact that we're not gonna like that. We're gonna be like, why isn't it done well? Of course it's done well. I'm sure you have the best Tyler in the world, but obviously it looks uneven. Maybe we're gonna kind of get over that. Um, so I'm worried about that with this design trend. So I don't think it's gonna make it past 2023 because I think people now really are okay with imperfect, but I don't, I don't think that's going to be an evergreen thing. So I'm sad about it. Um, so I don't think the hand form tile is gonna make it past 2023 so maybe don't put that up i think it's one of those things go look at it somewhere else but maybe not put it in your own home unless you have a home that really really lends itself to that design style and the next person who lives there is also going to embrace that design style the next design trend that's not going to make it out of 2022 is the oddly shaped mirror okay it might make it into 2023 for a little bit because they're cool they're fun they're funky i love them now i love these squiggly mirrors i love that they're fun i love that there's something different to look at because at a certain point a mirror is a mirror is a mirror right it's like do i look good in this one no do I look good in this one? No. So at least it should offer me something good to look at of itself, right? So they have these really fun frames. But the reason I don't think they're going to last is that they are a little bit more difficult to make. They tend to be a little bit pricier and it sometimes distorts the way that you look. There are tons of mirrors that distort the way that you look, but these squiggly mirrors tend to do it more so. And mirrors at the end of the day, unless they're really just used in a place where you never go look at yourself, a mirror it really is to look at yourself, to assess what's going on. And you want a mirror that can actually show you what you really look like um, because there's nothing worse than a mirror making you look um, to this or to that. You just don't want that. You want something that's gonna show you who you really are. So. That's why I don't think that these are going to last. Um, I also feel like a lot of these mirrors you can barely like see out of them. So this is not just like the squiggly line ones. These are just like irregular mirrors, like antique mirrors. Love them as well, but you can't actually see yourself. So I feel like they're just not performing a functional purpose. And therefore, I don't know if they're going to be as popular in 2023 and for years to come. Now this trend became popular and I want to say 2019 and the trend is black grout. So I don't think black grout is going to make it out of 2022. And let me tell you why. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. I think that grout is something that can really, really easily look dirty, right? Um, because it gets dirty, grout gets dirty. And when you make it black, I think you are already making it dirty. Plus, if you're grouting it yourself, you have to wash the tile off so many times when you first put it in to get off like that layer of like black film that it also, it never really looks as bright. It never looks as clean as you want it to. And that black grout, even though it's like a really minimal amount, it can really darken up a space. And I feel like we never want to do that unless we have a really large space and we kind of have like square footage to kill, if you will. So I don't think this design trend is going to make it into 2023, mostly because I personally don't like it because I think it just ends up looking dirty more than looking like really cool. I think it can be done super duper well. I think it's just I think we should just stop. I think we should just stop, but again, we can all have our own opinions on this, but let's talk about the next design trend. The next design trend I don't think is gonna make it out of 2022 is the colorful kitchen. Now, I love colorful kitchens. I actually grew up in a kitchen that was literally rainbow, um, and I loved it. It's so fun. I think it's a great way to add some amazing spirit and vibrancy to the heart of the home, which the kitchen definitely is. I don't think it's going to last because I think it can be a little overwhelming. I think it's overwhelming to style. I think it's overwhelming to exist in. I think it's one of the things that it's really nice to look at but you're like how do I maneuver this how do I actually live in this space without ruining it and I don't think you should ever feel that way in your kitchen because obviously you need to eat um, you need to eat so we don't want our kitchens to feel like that I think they're also a little bit more difficult to clean right because you have all these different colors you get the pasta sauce on it the pasta sauce on your green cabinet like yes nice an extra pop of red but I don't think that's really what we're going for there I think it's a lot easier to kind of keep the other cabinets clean the next reason why I think it's not going to last is because it's expensive. Unless you're a DIYer and you know how to use like the peel and stick wallpaper or you're kind of crafty, repainting your cabinets is really, really costly. It's really costly. And so I don't think it's a trend that people are monetarily going to be able to keep up with. And again, I know that you're on interior design YouTube, so you're into these interior design trends, but you have to think about all the other people in the world who just want something really cookie cutter, right? They want the modern farmhouse. They want the basic traditional. They want um, just like the basic, right? So those vibrant colors are gonna be off-putting to those people. They're gonna be off-putting putting to those renters and those buyers. And you have to think about that when you're designing your home, especially when you're making big changes like that. 
Now I can feel someone clicking the unsubscribe button right now and I'm, I'm sad about it. But the next thing that is not going to make it into 2023 is the wooden pedestal. So wooden pedestals have become super in. There's one in my kitchen right now and every single day I put the wooden pedestal next to the sink and every single day my wife goes, why is this by the sink? It doesn't serve literally not one purpose. It's just in the way. So with that, I've kind of explained my entire point here, but let me go into it further. So the wooden pedestal, it looks great. Now these pedestals, they're great for styling, right? But they take up a lot of space because they have four legs, they have the arm, they just take up a lot of space. So they're good for displaying candles and vases and stuff like that. But a lot of us don't have a lot of extra space to kind of like waste, right? Um, and sure, you can put your soap bottle on a pedestal, I guess, but there's really nothing that you should be putting on a pedestal besides your mother, you know, cause she's worth it. But otherwise there, there really shouldn't be anything on a pedestal, maybe a sculpture, but it's just kind of like, an extra piece of furniture. I think if you have the sideboards, if you have the place to style it, that's great. But in the bathroom, not always necessary. In the kitchen, not really necessary. Like the pedestal does not offset the really ugly Dawn dish soap container, right? And we gotta have the Dawn dish soap out because we gotta get our hands clean, right? We gotta stay safe. So I think it's just like kind of in the way. Um, that's all I have to say. I really like them. I have one. I'm going to keep arguing with my wife about it. Like it's fine, but I don't think it's going to make it into 2023 because they're literally just, they're just in the way. I think it's the same thing with like the cutting boards. We love layering cutting boards. I love that look, but a lot of people don't actually end up using those cutting boards. So you're like, why is it in the kitchen if I'm not actually going to use it? So if you're actually making use of these things, I hope you take it with you into 2023. But if you're not, let's move on from that and start designing with things that are functional and beautiful. So let me give you an example. In my kitchen, I have a vase that I think looks really, really nice and I put my cooking utensils in it. So it has a actual function and it looks good, right? I don't have a vase that can't fit anything because therefore it would just be in the way and how would I cook my dinner? Now, I'm not quite sure what to call this. So I'm gonna call it grandma chic. So I think, you know, the, the cottage core is in, the grand millennial is in and I think that's great, right? I love that we are revisiting old design styles because we're being more sustainable. We're kind of actually caring about the story of our furniture, I think that's beautiful. That is fantastic. But I think some of us are taking it a little bit too far, right? I think that like if you're 98 year old grandma and you who is, you know, you're 25, if you have the same design style, I just, there's a disconnect for me. Thankfully, I have not seen plastic back on the furniture, but if you start doing that, I'm coming over and I'm ripping it off, right? I just don't like the grandma chic that's coming back into style, like the doilies and stuff like that. I think some of it's nice. I love the floral pattern. I love that we're bringing back the wallpaper, but if we overdo it, if we commit, if we commit fully to the L.O. Bean aesthetic and we're not going hiking, like it's just problematic for me um, because we don't all live in cabins, right? We don't all live in like 1930. I think we should just kind of move on from it. Um, and also, it just gets really cluttered. There's a lot of upkeep. There's a lot of dust. I just don't think it's worth it. I think you can bring vintage item and it, vintage items and antiques into your home and make them look really sophisticated without kind of reverting and like hopping back into your time machine. Speaking of things being over cluttered, I think the next designs trend that is not going to make it into 2023, the design trend that is going to die is maximalism. So maximalism is really ramping itself up in 2022. People are like, I'm tired of living with nothing. I'm going to be honest. I'm not tired of living with nothing. I tried to add something and I hated it, but people are tired of living with nothing and that's fair, right? We don't want our homes to be sterile. We want them to feel like home, but I think we're going too far in that direction, right? We're like, I'm going to bring all of Target home. I'm going to bring all of Walmart home. I'm going to bring all of home goods home, right? But if we're not styling it correctly, if we're not, um, if we don't actually have a place for these things, you're just over cluttering your space. You're creating more work with, for yourself. You're spending lots of money. You're going to have to, again, get a deal with Swiffer. I mean, honestly, I should have gotten Swiffer to spawn through this video, right? <laughs> just kidding. Um, but it's just so much more work for you and it just looks like an episode of Hoarders unnecessarily. I think maximalism can be done beautifully. It is one of my favorite design styles, but I think it takes a lot of tact, right? And it takes a lot of intention and it takes time. People don't become maximalist by just going out to the store one day and buying everything. It's from your travels, it's from your experiences, from vintage shopping, it's from really, really doing research and then cultivating a space. So I don't think maximalism is going to make it into 2023 because I think it's just too much work for people. You kind of just want to 
live in your house. But I think whatever the middle ground between that is, the middle ground between minimal and maximalism, I think that's it. People don't want to live with nothing, but people don't want to live with everything. You want to have stuff. You want to enjoy your space. You want to decorate your space, right? We're not going to have it sterile anymore, but we're not going to overdo it. We want to make everything manageable for ourselves. And I love that because, you know, we're kind of promoting self-care and mental health with how we're designing um, in 2022 and 2023. And that is a design trend I can 100%, 100% get behind. The last design trend of 2022 that is going to die in 2023, thankfully, is the non-functional decorative accent. I've touched on this already because, so I'll be brief, maybe. I don't know if I can do that. But the non-functional decorative accent, the vase that can't actually fit flowers in it, like for some reason it's sealed up. Um, the the candle that you don't actually ever burn. It looks nice kind of, but you never burn it and it doesn't even smell good. All those things, we're gonna stop buying them. Things should just have a function. Again, people have smaller spaces. You're in that space all, all the time. You don't want it to be overcluttered. So you want to actually buy things and put things in your space that have a purpose. Even that candle, you're like, Kiva, that candle was expensive and it looks nice. Yes, but like you should also use it to make your home smell good. You shouldn't have to go out and buy a different candle or a different diffuser to make your home smell good. You should be able to buy the fewest number of things and still achieve your design goals, right? Because we want to save money. We want to be more sustainable. We just want to be overall more intentional. So that goes for the vase. It goes with those decorative throws. I'm telling you, in 2023, you're no longer going to have a throw that you don't use. If you're buying a throw that is too expensive for you to actually use, don't buy it. There's a dupe, I'll find you the dupe. Send me an email, I'll find the dupe for you. Actually start using your stuff. So only choose things that you actually feel comfortable using. Don't buy something out of your price range that costs so much that you'll never use it. Don't buy something that is so cheap that it's gonna fall apart so you can't actually use it. Buy things that actually have a functional purpose and look good. You will thank yourself for it because you're going to save so much money and you're going to really, really enjoy your home, right? Because you have to think about all of the different experiences, um, you know, the, the auditory, not the gustatory, but honestly, the gustatory, the olfactory. You need to think about all of those things in your space and cater to them when it comes to these design trends. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Those were 13 interior design trends from 2022 that are gonna die in 2023. They're over with, finito. Like, we're not doing them anymore. So, if you're crying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you used so many changes from today's video, but these design trends, they're not gonna make it, and that's okay, because now you know how to save your money in 2022 in preparation for 2023. At the end of the day, though, it should always be about making your home look good for you, um, because there's nothing better than that. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram, and until next time, have a beautiful day.